All right, guys, welcome back to the Quaking Punch. Uh, today, we are actually going to be profiling the Trevenant Break deck that was built by Brock Parch, who is a uh, he's a tournament organizer in the Eastern uh, Ohio, uh, no, Eastern Pennsylvania, Western Ohio, no, Eastern Ohio, Western Pennsylvania. I had it backwards. Don't, don't listen to me. Anyways, um, he built this deck, and a buddy of mine, Justin Titus, actually used it to go uh, second at the Ohio State Championship. And it's uh, we're, we use Trevenant Break. Um, you know, the, this this deck here is probably the most fun deck in Standard right now, I feel like. Um, like, you know, when you're just talking about, like, decks that actually make, like, smart plays, like, uh, other than, like, you know, just, like, burning through half your deck in one turn and just battle compressoring everything and then saying Night March three times. Um, you know, Trevenant's one of the most more fun decks to play in the Standard format. And it revolves around, this first, this Trevenant card here, which has the ability Force Cursed. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent cannot play any item cards from his or her hand. Item Lock is always going to be powerful in any meta game that you have to deal with. And then Trevenant Break will actually put three damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon. Uh, now, it's damage counters, not damage. So that is... it's. Um, it's very important that uh, you have to distinguish, distinguish between the two, uh, because if there's any effects that block damage, they do not block Trevenant Break's damage counter. Like for example, Glaceon. Uh, Glaceon will its effect Crystal Ray will not actually block the damage from Trevenant Break. But there are effects that can block damage counters or effects of an attack, which that is technically an effect of an attack. Uh, like um, Bronzong or Suicune, for example. So you got to be smart with how you play around those matchups. But um, you know, and it's really cool. And it, it, I mean, playing with this card in person is a lot of fun because you get to like break evolve up to you have this like shiny gold card in front of you, and it's like all sideways. It's it's cool. It's fun. Um, so <clears throat> it's your main attacker is Trevenant Break. Uh, you do get two Shaman for setup, but what really makes this deck work is Wobbuffet. Uh, Wobbuffet, one has Bide Barricade, so if you're going second, you can open up Wobbuffet to prevent any Shaman shenanigans. Um, and it's got Psychic Assault, so you could spread the damage across the board and really come up and just take like one hit knockouts of Wobbuffet and end the game in like two or three turns from that point. Um, it's pretty cool uh, to have in your deck for that reason. Um, this this list runs three. Most lists that I've seen ran two. I kind of liked having the third one and playing this uh, because you know you'd see like you prize one, one get knocked out early, then you have no way to close out the game. So having three, it, it's pretty, it, it's good. I, I would I would run three in the future. Um, trainers pretty basic. Uh, you got your four trainers mail, your four ultra ball, uh, your four vs seeker. AZ, Judge, Lysander. What makes this deck unique is it does run three copies of Wally. Uh, that's not unique to this build, that's just Trevenant. You don't really see that much Wally in a deck, or any for that matter. The reason why Wally is played is that if you're going first, you can use your Shamans to draw more cards and your Trainer's Mail to dig and try to find that Wally. You can play your Wally, evolve to Trevenant turn one, get turn one item lock. Your opponent doesn't even get a single turn of playing items. So that's really good. Um, that's why you're going to have three Wallies in this deck. If you want to play four, I won't be upset with you. I really don't think you need four. Uh, three should get the job done. Um, also, what makes this deck work is Bursting Balloon. You have a huge weakness to Evil Tall. And anything Dark, for that matter. And Dark's going to see a lot of play. But with Bursting Balloon, if you can get off, let's say, one Tree Slam and a Bursting Balloon that puts them at 80 damage... Okay, so then you're going to come up with Wobbuffet, you're going to deal 90, that puts him at 170. Now, that's like worst case scenario. If you get a Silent Fear plus Bursting Balloon, that's even better. Um, but as long as they don't have um, a Fighting Fury Belt, which they shouldn't because you've been item locking them, you are going to take the knockout that way. And then you're trading one prize for two, which is pretty good. Um, Zoroark is a little bit easier to handle because all you need is just the... The Bursting Balloon hit, and then the Wobbuffet hit, or a Bursting Balloon, and then a Tree Slam, and that's a little easier. But what makes Zoroark a little more difficult is the ability to freely switch. You can't really pull anything up and then stall, and then just spread damage. Um, so that's going to be an issue playing that deck, but there's there's outs to it. Um, now, uh, before I get too far, I do want to make a, make a note. I did make one change to, to Brock's list. Um, he did include one of the Breakpoint Trevenants. Um, I switched it to Forest Cursed um, while talking to Justin about the deck and like how he played the deck because his build is a lot different than mine. I uh, I asked him you know about the Breakpoint Trevenant, and he said it was completely useless for him. Um, he would have rather have had... 
um, the this Trevenant because he had gotten in situations where this was prized, and that was his only Trevenant left in the deck, and he couldn't effectively item lock. And if you don't know what that Trevenant does, is it makes the attack cost of a basic Pokemon one more. Uh, I guess he feared um, Giratina. That's why it was in there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the Giratina. So get, making like Giratina have to have like more than the two special energies it's used to having is pretty much undoable. So, I mean, if, if that's something you're afraid of, but he says it didn't really do him anything, so I did make that change. Um, also in the deck are two Headringers. Really nice, especially to stop the Shaman loop. Like, Because one of the ways you can beat this deck is to just keep Sky returning between Shamans and really just keep the damage off the board. So if you could throw a Headringer on one of those, they can't Shaman loop as easily. So that's going to give you a turn to get a couple Tree Slams in and take the knockout. Um... Energy counts pretty solid. Four mystery, five psychic. Oh, sorry, I got a screaming baby in there. Okay, um, a couple things I really, and one thing I really liked about this deck, like the most clutch card for me, I, I've complimented them on it, is this eco arm. Shuffle three Pokemon tool cards from your discard pile into your deck. Hadn't even crossed my mind to play eco arm, not even close. But if you think about it, you get three, four bursting balloons in a deck if you play four. If you cut the, the Bursting Balloons to three and play one Eco Arm, you can get six Bursting Balloons in a matchup. Now, uh, granted, you're not going to get every situation to be perfect, but if you could swing it right, you should get at least four or five every turn. And plus, you could also reuse Floatstones, Headringers, things like that. Um, so Eco Arm is just brilliant in this matchup. Uh, and also, you got the Super Rod to shuffle in another line of Trevenants if you needed her energy. Um, so that should pretty much do it for the deck analysis portion so let's just hop into a match and get going and, and i'd like to apologize to you guys really quickly because i ooh, do versus rewards um i haven't had much content lately and that's because i've been having a lot of trouble recording um I, it's just you know there's i've been getting lag tons of lag and it's been a problem with my with people watching my videos just commenting on it constantly like this video is almost unwatchable because of all the lag and it's just like I, i'm really sorry there's not much i can do about it but i think i got it fixed um you're gonna notice that it's not an hd quality and for that i'm sorry but um i can't really pump out hd quality and not have the lag and without the lag so if we want to get rid of the lag it's not going to be hd which to me if you weigh the pros and cons of it I feel like having um, no having without no lag is better than having the HD videos. Now we're playing a deck that's Dragon and Dark. I'm willing to bet this is that Zoroark um, Drudigan deck that you saw like actually beat this deck in the state finals um, of of Ohio. So like, and it, it's it's a bad matchup. We're just gonna get thoroughly destroyed. Um, I mean. <laughs> It, it, as far as matchups go, this is pretty bad. Um, if, if it was like an evil tall deck, we would have a better shot. But I I don't really love our, our chances. And by evil tall, I mean evil tall EX. But we're going to do the best we can with what we got. Alright, so... he's Yep, that's exactly what it is. Man, I am good. Like, scary good. Now, he's benching the Shaman, which is kind of a mistake, if you ask me. And where this deck shines, this Zoroark deck, and, you know, I've used it a bunch, it really does a good job at just playing to the fact that your opponents are going to play a lot of Shaman in Standard. And it does a really good job at knocking out Shamans. So, if you look at Revenge... Uh, if any of your Pokemon are knocked out during this play, attack does so many more damage. So we're at 90 for DCE, plus Muscle Band is 110. Perfectly designed to kill a Shaman. Uh, Zoroark. If they have Shamans on their bench, they probably have something else. Zoroark's going to one-shot a Shaman. The deck usually runs three Target Whistle. If, if not more, I, wouldn't, I don't think it would run any less than that. But it usually runs three Target Whistle to get Shamans out of your discard onto the bench so they can take three easy Shaman knockouts and just win the game. Um, it's a pretty brilliant design. Um, when you think about it, because there's a lot of you don't you know, a lot of decks like Night March where you don't really want to take six Night March knockouts. You just rather take the three Shaman knockouts that are gonna bench a lot of Shamans. So um, you know it's it's pretty smart in that aspect. So I kind of I really like the deck. Um, it doesn't work as well on TCGO. I've noticed me personally because I don't see a lot of Shaman on TCGO because it's an expensive card and people playing casually don't really play with it. 
Okay, so one thing you want to do is in this situation when you have an energy, always attach to the bench phantom in case this gets knocked out, you don't lose the energy. Because I'm just going to Ascension right away. And I'm going to get my Trevenant and I'm going to Ascension for free because we have the Dimension Valley. Um, being in this position, though, we're, that we're in right now is pretty bad. So we don't have a Shaman of any kind. Um... I just hope he passes. I hope he decides, you know, I'm not going to take the damage. It's not worth it. I'm just going to pass. That would be nice. The fact that he got the Zoroark out, though, hurts. But at the end of the day, I mean, we're pretty much in. We're already up up the creek without a paddle because he's going to get a. He's going to get in. Oh, he didn't. He opted not to take it. Okay. That was pretty much our one out because now we got the break. But there's really nothing else I can do. Because I don't really want to easy anything, so we're just going to end the turn. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, we're in a position where a hand is just dead right off the bat. Uh, the deck usually does draw pretty well, so uh, it's not an issue of poor construction, as obvious as evidenced by you know the run it had to states, you know, all the way through taking second in Ohio, and plus it it, it did have a lot of wins and top four finishes throughout all the rest of the states. It, it's definitely a good deck. Oh, no. There's the Hex Maniac. Okay. I mean, we're just going to get crushed anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Trainer's Mail for another Hex Maniac. You've got to be kidding me. And we can't even shame in next turn. So if we get if we top deck Ultra Ball, we're toast. Wow. Okay. That's something. Yeah, we're going to get rid of that. For sure. Um, we're going to pick that up for sure. Like, I don't want to... I don't know. That probably wasn't the smartest move, but it is what it is. Like, I really had nothing else I can do. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. There's picking that up, leaving it down. I guess I probably should have just left it down. Let's see what the top deck... Oh, no. Because we got rid of the, 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 the valley, so... Maybe that wasn't that bad of a move. Gave us an extra turn before we died. All right, so we're going to get three turns, uh, one turn of Silent Fear. Right, we do what we got to do, boys. There it is, one turn of Silent Fear. I don't, I don't see how we get out of this because he's just going to rush in and Start taking knockouts in a few turns. We'll stand in, rather. Sorry. Dude, there's this flying here, and it's driving me nuts. Sorry, guys, if I keep looking around. Man, it must be nice to have sycamores. Like, I don't even know what that's like. Uh, now that Fates Collides is out, um, there's a lot of changes to the deck you can make. Like, for example, Judge can now be N. For sure. That's probably it, though. I, I, I can't see too many other changes that you'd want to make. Judge becoming N is pretty much it. He didn't, he didn't Hex Maniac, he sycamore that turn, so that's good. So if we get an Ultra Ball, we can Ultra Ball for Shaman. Start getting set up here. We didn't, but we can Wally into Trevenant Break. And then use our man Wallace here to grab a Trev Break. It's the last one in the deck, too, so we need some help here. Alright, we're going to get two turns of Silent Fear off unless we get... No, even if we get a, <laughs> a Lysander, it doesn't matter. Zorark's just going to stand in and destroy us, so... Not much we can really do here. Just prolonging the inevitable. Well, he's going to add us. I mean... I... I don't know why you do that. Like, I'm sitting here doing nothing. Like, literally, I'm, like, hanging on for scraps. And then you're going to throw me a lifeline. Like, that doesn't make a lick of sense to me. But it is what it is, I guess. He's going to stand in. What's he going to do? He's going to tree slam? Yeah, he's going to tree slam. He's just going to take the win, so it doesn't matter. Oh, no, because it's only 60. Never mind. I thought he had the muscle band. He should have done it. He should have vaulted this one. He would have won. Like, right there. Like, what are you doing? 
All right, I guess you want to let me hang around here. I mean, I'll take this judge because YOLO. How much HP does this thing have? 80? Can't really do much to it. I mean, I could take the bursting balloon here. Um, we're going to take the Sycamore because I need another Pokemon on the bench. Um, if he really wants to attack through this and knock out, knock himself out, that's fine. I don't really care. Um, let's see. I don't care, just to get rid of that. We'll get rid of the Sycamore because I'm going to shame in real quick here. Um, actually, I kind of want to Wobbuffet. So we can start taking some cleanup knockouts. I kind of think he did me a favor there. Like, he could have won the game and he kind of let me hang around and get back in it. Um, yeah, this is actually really nice. Okay, so uh, we got the Wobbuffet if we want to take some cleanups. I'm going to bench this Wobbuffet too because why not? There's really nothing else we can do. And we're just going to take another Silent Fear. If he wants to take the knockout on himself, that's fine. He really can't attack with anything else and, and survive. Um... So that's good. Got quite a bit of damage on the board right now. So Wobbuffet should be able to just stand in and start doing some work. I don't know why you do that, Ed, and I don't know why you just don't end the game. Like, you had the out. You had the 80 damage times 2 is 160. You basically did 40 less than you should have. Now, he's, he is gearing up that Drudagon to take a knockout. That's fine. I don't really want to trade one for one. I guess it depends on what he promotes here, because I think he realizes he's getting he's getting not he's getting knocked out here. Okay, here comes my prize. So he needs to get another Trevenant break going, and I gotta find that super rod to do it because like those shamans there. Oh come on, dude! Seriously, <laughs> like you're just making these moves that are just so bad. Like, why let me just do this? Like, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Um, I'm not going to bother with the Via Seeker right now because I want to wanna Wally to one of these Phantoms because hopefully if I could pull the Trevenant Break prize, that would be really juicy. Just getting that Trev Break and hitting those Shamans down there because that just ends the game. Like, right there. One more Trevenant Break ends the game for me. And there's really nothing my opponent can do for it. Because he just let me hang around. Like, why did you do that? Like, I just don't get it. And, like, that's a that's a prize card he gave up there. That Drodagon that he didn't really have to give up. And there it is. Trevenant Break. So, he can do whatever he wants to do. We're just going to retreat. Attach energy. And then Silent Fear and win. Like, this went from an auto win to my opponent, like, just brutally misplaying into a loss. Like, how, how do you lose this game? Like, I just don't get it. Like, you gotta close that out, man. Like, when I saw Zorak rush in, I'm like, that's it. It's game over. Unless he finds, like, an AZ, but then I still pick up a prize here. No, I don't pick up a prize there. I mean, yeah, he's gotta find an AZ. He's gotta judge. Okay, so he's gonna judge me. I guess that's fine. I'm still gonna hit you for 70. I'm gonna take your knockout here. But I mean, you guys, I guess you can kind of see like all the pressure that Trevenant Break applies because right now he's on a clock. He knows I'm one Silent Fear away from just winning the game, and that's not a good spot to be in. Why don't you judge? Did you get the? Like, why pull it out? Good game, I guess. Ah, if you pull that out of the deck, I'm thinking you're gonna Versus Seeker to it and then attach. I don't know, man. Good game. It is what it is. Oh, man. Okay. We're just going to treat Silent Fear, and then we'll take the win. And that's going to do it for that for that match. Um, so I guess you get to see kind of like the immense pressure just Trevor and Break puts in on, on opponents. Like, I have no idea how we came with that win. We should have just been destroyed. Like, you cannot let me 
hang around. If you let me hang around long enough, I'm gonna find a way to win. Like, that's just all there is to it. Like, you can't let me hang around that long. He, unfortunately, let me hang around that long, so we're gonna take it. Um, but, you know, you'll see more of this deck in the coming weeks. I'm gonna try recording my, um, my Poke Beach tournaments. Uh, you know, I got a match coming up later tonight that I'm gonna record. Um, I had, I recorded a phenomenal match where I played an evil tall deck and I won that in three games, but of course it's lag city. So you guys aren't going to see it. Excuse me. You guys aren't going to see it, but thanks a lot for hanging out. Thanks a lot for coming back to the channel. I should say, I, I really appreciate you guys. Um, I'm going to have some fun, cool rogue decks next week. Um, hopefully, um, hopefully I got the lag under control. Please let me, if you noticed any, I'm going to watch it beforehand, but I, there shouldn't be any, I, I got it fixed. They said, we're not seeing any drop frames. You should be good to go. So, fingers crossed that that stays that way forever. All right, but thanks a lot for hanging out with us again today, guys. Uh, definitely leave me a like and a comment down below about how I did or uh, any decks you'd want to see going forward because, you know, Fates Collide coming out has just been, you know, blowing my mind, you know, how, you know, what the what uh, the, the, the capabilities of that set brings, like all the Regirocks and Alakazam, stuff like that. And I got all the cards ready to go. So you just let me know what you want to see, and we'll make it happen. All right, guys, that'll do it for today's episode. Thanks again.